morning guys, it's Mark here and welcome to Giant Empire. Now in this episode we finally finish off Andrea's AU 5 litre Fairlane. We finish off some internal engine stuff, we finally put a J3 TI Performance tune in this thing. Also, I fixed the hood lining. Guys, now following up from the last episode, got halfway through changing all the push rods on this five litre Windsor. Um, <clears throat> long, boring process. I didn't have the capacity to do it last week, but here we are. Finally got it done. I've buttoned up this side now. I've gone over all the push rods, checked all the, um, the tensions and everything is all Mickey Mouse. I didn't show that, obviously, because this ain't a tutorial, but... Um, yeah, if anyone's doing a cam swap, you definitely need to look into your push rod lengths. And I'm very lucky that I didn't do any damage. So now that I've got that all set, I'm going to put this all back together and hopefully we can finally test drive this thing. Now I'm going to give this a good rundown with some grey uh, silicon sealant. Get this intake manifold all on. And try and remember where all this wiring goes. Man, I hate working on new school stuff. So one of the first things you guys might notice is the amount of silicon sealant I'm slapping on this intake manifold. I probably went a little bit overboard here, but the reason being is that this intake manifold you see me putting on right now, the top section is actually a second one that I've used on this car. The first one I painted up all nice and pretty, but when I put it down, it was sitting a little skew. I didn't realize and actually cracked the intake manifold. These things are very brittle. They break like an Easter egg if you put a tension on it in the wrong spot. So I ended up um, replacing the intake manifold, putting it on, and I've just been a little bit cautious since then. So more silicon, less tightening. Now we move on to giving this thing a clean. Now the thing has been sitting for months. Um, my fault, again, but I couldn't bear to drive this thing looking like a farm hack. So we gave this thing a quick once over. I'm gonna scrub it down so it actually looks the part. Then we can actually test drive it. Can't wait to see what this thing actually performs like. Okay, so once I pulled the AU around and started giving it a wash because I couldn't bear to drive it the way it was, it looked like it had been sitting for months, which it had. Um, I realized that I made a major mistake. When I put the intake manifold back on it and the stupid gas converter, everyone's gonna rag on me for having gas on this thing. It was set too high. I remember even looking at it going, I need to make sure that's low enough to clear the bonnet. And it wasn't, and it put a dent right there I am so bummed might be a little bit hard to see but it's definitely a dent right up in the middle of the bonnet absolutely peaking and um, pretty much I felt like having a meltdown but after wiping this car over and giving it a good clean I'm seeing there's a lot of little dents anyway it doesn't make me feel a hell of a lot better but there does um, need a little bit of addressing so I've got a few little dents Andrea has a few little dents in her car, of course. Um, in the boot, there's one, a few in the boot, boot there, downwards, um, one in the quarter. So anyway, I have to get that all addressed in one hit. So anyone that knows, anyone in Adelaide, knowing a uh, good dentless removal guy, um, hit me up. Or if you're a dentless removal guy in Adelaide, hit me up. I'll um, definitely be sending business your way because I need to get this thing sorted, I want this thing straight. And... Um, I've also noticed the more I go around this car cleaning it, the more I'm noticing the paint is really starting to age really rapidly. Um, these 
all the cars from like the mid 90s through the early 2000s for some reason the clear coat on them was just junk um, and i could see the roof sort of getting worse but it's deteriorating really badly so i gonna have to respray the roof probably the bonnet as well boot seems all right at the moment but yeah mirrors man the clear coat in this era is terrible but anyway we'll push on i'm gonna get this thing clean and um kind of got the shits on today i might test this thing tomorrow when i'm uh feeling a little bit more optimistic when you test this thing out and finally see how this thing goes with the new tuner in it i'm sick of working on it it's beating me Now we are finally ready to send this thing down the road and see how it actually performs. I've had so many months of setbacks um, with this car, basically my fault. Um, and also I've shelved it many times over the last year. But we're finally here, we're finally ready, we've finally got it all sorted. The engine should be dialed in and also should be the new tune which I've now put in the car thanks to TR Performance. Now I'll notice straight off the bat, I've still got the nice choppy idle, of course, but aside from a little bit of condensation, there is no smoke anymore. When I first fired this thing up, this thing was very, very smoky. A lot of unburnt fuel, and um, it wasn't happy, especially after a bit of a driving, it just got worse, really. So, so far, obviously a super cold morning up here in the Adelaide Hills, it's frosty as almighty hell, so we've got a bit of condensation, but that's it. This thing's ready to roll. I do live in a rural area, but there still are a few houses around the place, so we'll, we'll head out a few k's till we hit the forest, so we don't disturb the peace. Because this thing's pretty loud. In our first pull, drop back to second gear, um, and yes, yeah, smooth as silk, not a puff of smoke. Um, yeah, nice smooth pull through the whole rev range. Really, really happy with that. I'm just gonna drop back to first. Oh yeah, that's nice. That is a hell of a lot better than this thing used to be. Um, perfect pull, shifted right on the rev line, five and a half grand. Um, yeah, and, and the pickup is like chalk and cheese to what it was. Obviously, it's, this ain't never gonna be no drag car um you know it's a pretty you know tight old windsor but this thing is absolutely a different vehicle the skin of a rice pudding was that just went first and second and just rung out for like a hundred feet oh man that's so cool <laughs> i just watched the footage back and realized that oh we got we got company i might be in trouble <laughs> oh yeah now this thing this thing is awesome man i'm so stoked on this oh man i just watched the footage back and i just realized that the the opposite wheel was peeling to the side that I was recording. But um, yeah, it's this is awesome. I'm absolutely stoked on the difference this thing has made with the new tune. And oh man, unreal. And it's probably gonna get better as well because realistically, when I drove this thing the first time, we done like 2000 Ks on it with, a, with no tune in it, just a factory tune. And I really fouled up those plugs I'd say because it was getting very, very uh, smoky in the end. And uh, yeah, it wasn't happy. So um, it'll probably get better as it clears up, probably due for a set of plugs anyway. Um, but yeah, this thing is like chalk and cheese, absolutely stoked. Once again, I can't say it's gonna be a, a, a rocket, but it's got 
It's got a hell of a lot more balls in it. It is absolutely 100% night and day noticeable. Um, this thing was ultra, it was doughy. I mean, I, t I kid you not, this thing wouldn't spin a single wheel, even in the wet weather. It was an absolute pooch for some reason. Andrea's old Beta $1,500 NC Fairlane had more balls than this thing. Um, but yeah, this thing is like different, a different animal. And also, it's hard to explain on the film. It's hard to hear, but it has more aggression in the in the driving note as well. Not just the idle. When you put your foot down, it sounds like it's got balls. Whereas before, it, it, you know, they always had a nice note to it, but it was just like a, a bit of a deep rumble. But this has got some serious aggression behind it. So absolutely stoked with the the tune that um, I, I scored from TI Performance and uh yeah absolutely wrapped to have a good outcome after all the pain this thing has put me through over the last 12 months as you can see not a puff of smoke give it a couple of little quick wraps on this thing zero smoke i'm really happy with that and no noise up front i haven't broken anything Push rods seem to be spot on. Oh yeah. Love the sound of a Windsor. All right, now one last thing I've got to do before this video is through. And it's not a small thing, it's a big thing. I've been, we've been wanting to do the hood lining on this car forever. In fact, when we actually bought this car from my mate Brenton, I don't know how long, it must've been two years ago now. It actually come with a roll of hood lining material that he had planned to do himself and uh, never got around to it. So um, yeah, I finally got that off him and now I've decided that today is the day that I'm actually gonna do it. So um, I, know, I know it's been on the cards for a while, but I'm gonna try and give it a crack. I've, I've only done it a couple of times with the help of other people, never on my own. So we'll see how we go. <sighs> this is gonna be a big day. guys now we're going to handle this thing hopefully unfortunately being a fair lane it's got a lot more things in the roof there's obviously interior lights there's lots of interior lights here 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 holy shit handles over here big big c pillars back here um yeah, lots of little nitty gritty things. I feel like this is gonna take me all day. So anyway, we're gonna time lapse the shit out of this. I'm gonna try, try my best to get this all undone, drop it down, get it out, and then address the sagginess. Now I'm not gonna give you guys a full rundown on what to do with the roof lining. It's pretty much just follow your nose stuff. A bunch of time just unbolting everything that's clipped up underneath this roof lining and then just taking your time trying to get this thing out in one piece. You don't want to damage this thing on the way out. I'm doing it right, I'm not sure. She'll twist it up. Obviously, I'm trying my best not to crumple the corners, but I think I got it right. Just gonna try and gently manipulate this bad boy out. Shit. I assume when they did it in the factory, there was no seats in the car, so I would have went in a hell of a lot easier. All right, now the fun stuff. It's time to get dirty.
Now that we got this roof lining out, it's just a matter of rubbing down all the old foam that's gone crusty. Just using a firm bristled brush, sometimes even a wire brush is good for this. Once you got it all clean, it's pretty much ready to roll. Okay, so after we got this fabric all ready to go, I start laying down a couple of coats of spray adhesive. Now this is a quality stuff, I don't do it all the time, so I've just gone with the rattle pack option. Um, all I know is you've got to spray both surfaces and then work your way from the inside out, making sure you don't let this shit stick to itself because it doesn't let go. Best part of this whole exercise <laughs> driving car to work. <laughs> Alright, so we just had some muffler fluff come out of the exhaust. As she nailed it to take off to work this morning. Looks like we're up for some new mufflers. I'm looking at the boys from Kalua Mufflers for this one. Now that's gonna be it for this episode, guys. Thanks for coming out to the channel. Don't forget to like, comment, let us know what you think of the AU that's finally finished. Um, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Hit that notification bell if you want to stay up to date with all the Iron Empire content. And I will see you all on an upcoming episode. Cheers, guys.